Greetings everyone, it is the Ambassador and coming at you with a brand new video today. And we will be resuming our Babylon 5 series. I know it's been a while since I've done an entry in this series, but we've had some other things going on in pop culture and um, those kind of sort of took precedent. So for those of you that have been missing the Babylon 5 videos, Today, we pick up where we left off, and we will be continuing uh, with the character uh, discussion videos, and today we will be discussing Dr. Stephen Franklin, Chief Medical Officer for Babylon 5, and if I remember correctly, he was also a medical advisor for the Interplanetary Alliance, no, Interstellar Alliance, excuse me. But, uh, that being said, for those of you that might be new to my channel, this is one of the major topics I do cover is Babylon 5. So if you enjoy this type of content, consider giving me a uh, look over on some of my previous entries in the Babylon 5 universe. And if you like what you see, consider giving that like button a smash and subscribing to my channel. But that all being said, let's dive right in and let's uh, do a little uh, discussion on Dr. Stephen Franklin. Now, as with previous entries, I will be going chronologically from our first introduction to Dr. Franklin within the Babylon 5 universe, in particular the TV shows. I do primarily cover the TV shows. I did not have an opportunity to read any of the books or anything except for a few snippets here and there. But our first introduction to Dr. Franklin was in the Babylon 5 TV movie in the beginning. Now, he has a very couple of brief scenes within, the, within that movie. And obviously, in the beginning, it takes place during the earth Mambari War. And he did serve in Earth Force or anything in the medical division, uh, from what we gather uh, throughout the TV series. And our first introduction to Dr. Franklin is a rather intriguing one. Uh, at the point that we are introduced to Dr. Franklin, the war between Earth and the Membari is going rather badly for Earth. And the government, the uh, military is putting a lot of pressure on various scientists and medical experts to come up with different um, means of combating the Membari, and in particular, in this particular case, uh, they're, discuss they're trying to find uh, biological uh, countermeasures to combat the Membari, in particular uh, genetic viruses, plagues, and those sorts of nasty um, dealings and everything. And what we discover about Dr. Franklin is that he takes his position as a doctor, as a physician, as a person who has um, dedicated his life to saving lives and not taking them very seriously. Um, in the Babylon 5 universe, we uh, gathered that the Hippocratic Oath is something that is still very much uh, a part of the medical profession. And Dr. Franklin holds to that tenet of the medical profession to do no harm. And what we have in this uh, first in this scene is him in a, conf a head-on confrontation with a, I think it's a general within Earth Force military. And it does not come to blows, but the discussion becomes rather heated where the general tells Franklin, either you surrender your records and help us develop some sort of biological virus or plague to uh, combat the Membari, or you get thrown in the stockade. And Dr. Franklin, being a man of principle and being a man of conviction, he very much is against this idea, which I can say I very much respect. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the, um, within that scene, you have the general tell a, a couple of um, military police to place Dr. Franklin into the in the stockade in military prison because he, while he is a physician, he also is a member of Earth Force military and is subject to um, military punishment. And a while later, within the uh, that particular TV movie. Uh, you see Franklin once again on a mission with um, Jacquard and uh, John Sheridan to broker a 
peace treaty with the Membari. And the reason for this is the fact that and one of the reasons why Franklin was uh, pursued so heavily by the military is he had had previous contact with a group of Membari and his expertise would be of great value in everything during this particular mission. He could verify that it was in fact Membari that um, Sheridan and Jakar were meeting with and if anything went sideways they would have a physician on hand. Um, unfortunately, that particular um, mission goes rather goes sideways rather qu quickly due to the actions of Londo Malari. He gets wind of the fact that the Earth, the Earth Gov, and the Membari are meeting on a distant outpost, but he gets he gets his information incorrect, and he actually sends a uh, Centauri battle cruiser. <coughs> excuse me, to that particular planet. And what ends up happening is that the Membari agent that meets Sheridan and Jakar and um, Franklin uh, sadly gets killed. Um, Sheridan and the other, and Jakar and Franklin, Franklin are brought on board a uh, Membari cruiser. And through some last minute negotiation they actually get set free. The next time we meet Franklin is actually in I believe episode 2 or 3 of season 1 of Babylon 5 because for those as I've mentioned previously there were some switch ups or anything of officers and actors or anything from the pilot episode into the main series itself and Franklin is brought on board as the uh, chief uh, medical officer for B for Babylon 5. Now throughout the series Franklin develops several different relationships within the show. He develops a he develops a good rapport with the command staff which includes either Sinclair or Sheridan Ivanova and Garibaldi. But he also develops an interesting relationship with Ambassador Jakar in I think it's toward the end of season 3 going into season 4. And onward. And Franklin acts a little bit as a mirror or a reflector for the other um, for the other characters. He does have an interesting story arc of his own and anything which deals with um, addiction. And also I think that was a very poignant and very well done piece of uh, character writing by J. Michael Straczynski, the creator of Babylon 5. Because what we have with Franklin is a very complex and in-depth character. This We find out later on that he is the son of a military officer of a general in Earth Force. And that um, Franklin decided not to go into the military, but rather he wanted to go into the medical service, which honestly I think is very commendable. He did not have a great interest in taking life and being a soldier like the majority of his family because his family has an ancestry or a heritage of serving in the military, but he wanted to do so, but he wanted to do it his own way and he wanted to work in the medical field, which I think is, as I said, is, is very commendable. Now, the other interesting thing about Franklin is, and this takes place during the story arc of the Shadow War and, le and lead up to it, Franklin starts to take a substance known in Babylon 5 as stems. And this is a substance that it's, it's short for stimulant and everything, obviously. And what these stimulants do is it allows you to function mentally and physically longer than what would be normally um, possible for a human being. Uh, these obviously is a substance that's used in the medical field and everything, so Franklin would have access to it. And what ends up happening is he becomes addicted to this substance. <coughs> Excuse me. And Garibaldi, who also has dealt with substance abuse in the past, I think I may have mentioned this, Garibaldi was, in fact, um, in his past, an alcoholic. And 
Garibaldi starts to see the wheels coming off for Franklin, and he reaches out to Franklin and says, Hey, man, I can see things are going sideways with you. I am here. I want to help you if you will let me. And at first, Franklin is very resistant to this. He feels like he's got a good handle on it and so on. But eventually, he does come to the realization that he has buried himself so much in his work that he doesn't know his he he looks in the mirror and he doesn't see himself anymore all he sees is his job and all the um, commitments and responsibilities that he has uh, laid upon himself and I honestly think this is a very good um, angle to explore the problem of addiction and also the problem of overcommitment to one's job and one's responsibilities and so on. Hold on one second. As I was saying, um, the thing about Franklin is his story arc very much involves um, the issue of addiction and overcommitment to everything but oneself. And I think this is something that is, it's a very valuable lesson that we can all learn from. Because with Franklin, what we see is the fact that while our responsibilities to our profession, our job, whatever you may want to, wherever you want to frame it, are important, they should not take precedent over taking care of oneself and how easily and how quickly we can use a addiction, a bad habit to bolster ourselves temporarily, but ultimately that addiction can and in some cases will destroy you if you let it. Now, the way Franklin resolves this issue with his addiction to stems is rather intriguing because the other, the other thing about Franklin is, and this isn't talked about a great deal, but Franklin is what if I recall correctly, is what they call an agnostic. He doesn't conform to any particular organized religion, but he does have a conversation, I believe, with either Ivanova or with Garibaldi at one point. And he um, discloses the fact that he's what they call a foundationalist. And it was a relatively new religious organ, um, den denomination or religious belief put a better to put a, to a better term on it and the way he explains it is after humanity had gotten out into deep space and started to discover all these different alien races they came to realize that there was a foundational truth to the universe and to um, all life and the one quote that I recall from that conversation is he has been seeing a lot of wounded and injured aliens, in particular Narns and others, come through the medical facility there on Babylon 5. And what he tells, I, be, I hate that I don't remember exactly who he says it to. I guess it's not that important. But what he does say is, over the last several days and weeks, maybe even longer, He's been seeing a lot of reflected gods. And while he does not have a particular religious belief or a organized religious religious belief, he frames it in, in a very interesting way about this idea of reflected gods. Because obviously a lot of people that he is interacting with and having to treat most likely are people of faith. And when he, he says... When you look into the eyes of someone who's about to die or who is dying and they look past you and they're looking towards something but you don't know what exactly it is and you get a, you, if you catch their eyes just right, you can see a reflection of God or a God or anything depending on if it's a human or if it's an alien species or anything. And... I honestly thought that was a very interesting way of discussing 
religious belief within a science fiction um, franchise in, a, in, that, in that particular context. But the other interesting story arc about Franklin is what he ends up doing is he goes on a thing called Walkabout. And this is actually a callback to the Aboriginal um, peoples that live down in Australia and so forth. And what they would do is if they got into a situation where they felt like they had lost a part of themselves or they had felt like they had lost focus on life, they would take a very minimal supplies and they would go on walkabout where they would just walk and walk and walk until hopefully at some point they would encounter themselves. And then the two, the, the two halves of that person would sit down and they would talk about all the important things, everything they had seen, everything they had learned, everything they had done and so forth until they got to a point where words did not, they had run out of words to say. And that's when the really important conversation began in a matter of speaking. And eventually, once you got done with that conversation, you would look up and the other half of yourself would, <coughs> um, would reincorporate itself into you. And what we have in Babylon 5 is this idea of Stephen uh, Franklin going on walkabout. And he resigns his, um, from his position as chief medical officer on Babylon 5. But he remains on Babylon 5 because Babylon 5 is a huge, huge station if y'all have seen the, if you've seen the series. And you could theoretically walk from one to the other and it would take you a while to do it. Not to mention there's so many different levels to the station. But the fascinating thing is Franklin does, in fact, meet himself. He gets mixed up in a mugging, I believe it is, and he gets very gravely injured. And that's right when the other half of himself comes across him. They cross paths. And the other half of himself is none too pleased with what, how Franklin's been living and what he's been doing. And Franklin becomes very, he's, he's quite literally, he's starting to go into shock and he's very close to dying. And he tells the other half of himself, I know I did all of this wrong. I know I have screwed up. I have screwed up monumentally. But I want to try and do it again. I want to try and do it right. And the other half of himself is, quite frankly, very hard and harsh on him. And he's like, okay, well, fine. You want to do it? Well, you have to pull yourself up, even though you're dying, and drag yourself back to civilization and hope to heck that they can save your life. And what ends up happening is that this does, in fact, happen. As I was saying... Um, Franklin does, in fact, survive his ordeal. He does recover, and once he has recovered sufficiently, he does return to his position as chief medical officer for Babylon 5. And he does continue to work with the um, rest of the team and everything there on the station. He does play a rather important part in the war against Clark. Um, him and Marcus Cole, and I'm actually going to be doing a video on Marcus as well at some point. That might be actually my next video. But what ends up happening is, I think it's in season three. A lot of stuff happens in season three. Um, a number of registered telepaths with Psycor are being fitted with techno shadow technology so that those telepaths can be used as the central processing systems of shadow vessels and a shipment of these are actually discovered by Babylon 5 and Franklin has tried um, for the last several months to try to figure out how to save or how to remove the shadow technology from these people but what ends up happening is they at this point simply don't have the technological means to do it 
But what happens is Sheridan tells Franklin that they're going to be sending a large batch of these modified shadow mod, modified uh, telepaths to Mars because at this point everything during the war against Clark Marcus and uh, Franklin are on Mars or anything they're using it uh, they're working with the Mars underground the resistance there and what ends up happening is they ship these telepaths onto a large number of Earth Force cruisers as a means to disable them and Franklin and Marcus or anything, they play a very important part in the war against Clark in particular in organizing the resistance there on Mars and partially on Earth. <sighs> anyway, after the war with Clark is over and done with, um, and I'm kind of skipping over a few things here because I don't recall every single thing I haven't had a chance as of yet to watch all of the TV movies that Franklin might have played a part in. But jumping ahead to the um, the end of season five, we see that Franklin has been um, promoted through Earth Force military, and he's actually um, at one point working with Veer Koto, who is now the um, emperor of the Centauri Republic. As a, I'm guessing, he's working with him as an aide or a counselor or something along those lines. But I think what we have with Franklin is a very interesting character study. And I think I've hit upon that, at least I hope I have, in a relatively decent faction. I don't know exactly what happens to Franklin at the end of the series. Like I said, the last thing that I recall from Frank about Franklin is that he is working with Vircoto and everything as an attache or a counselor or something along those lines, helping Vir reorganize the Centauri government. And maybe he's even working as a liaison between Earth Force the Earth Force government and the Centauri Republic. That might be a possibility too. But I think what we have with Franklin is a very interesting character, a very intriguing one. He does have some very interesting moments throughout the series. And I think, honestly, of all the different characters that we uh, meet in Babylon 5, he is... I think the I think while all the characters are relatable, I think the story arcs that we have with Franklin are some of the best and some of the most relatable, because Franklin isn't necessarily the everyman because of his position and his expertise, but I think he is honestly one of the most relatable characters in the series, and I honestly enjoyed his story arc and everything throughout the series. But that all being said, um, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Like I said, we will be doing a couple more character studies and anything before we uh, move on throughout the Babylon 5 universe. And if you did, in fact, enjoy this video, like I said, consider giving it a like, sharing it with your friends. If, they, if, you, know your, if you know a Babylon 5 fan, or if you yourself are one. Um, but all that being said, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, this is the Ambassador, signing off.